Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking with Chris to Echo Zero Uniform Kilo Hotel. I got that right, don't I? That's uh, spot on, uh, Rob. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Good. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about our attempts at um, scheduling contacts. Um, Chris is in the UK and I'm in New England in the United States. And we've had a couple of successful contacts. And we thought we would kind of talk a little bit about that with everyone here today. The idea is if I can do it, anyone can do it. You know, I'm in a block of flats, you know, it's like, I think you call it a condominium over there. There's no garden, you know, HF is difficult. So you don't give up. You just, I just jump in the car, jump in the car, sit on a hilltop. I know you do parks on the air, don't you? You go out and sit in a field. I like to sit in the car and, you know, for some reason I, I can hit America quite easily. It's not, it's not too difficult you know i mean obviously i've got got my aerials uh tuned properly but i'm only allowed 50 watts you know i'm 50 watts and i never go over that there's no need to because you can do it i've done it on 10 20 watts yeah i remember that the first time we made a contact was what was it maybe about six months or so ago i don't remember the exact time yeah yeah it was the situation that you just described you were out in the field on a hill hamstick we, with a hamstick in your car yeah. 50 watts um icom 7100 7,300 7, at the time, I think. Okay. Yeah. So you were out on the, on the field and I think you were either, I don't know if you were live streaming or we happened to, to talk about it on the Discord channel in the background, uh, but I knew you were on the air. Um, so I was in the shack here and I fired up yeah. and, and I could hear you. So we were able to make a contact, which was great. How, how far are we? I about three and a half, 4,000 miles away? I think it's four or maybe 5,000. But yeah, it's a good distance, of course, across the ocean and everything. And um, yeah, we love trying to get across that water. Yeah. And five hour time difference. So, you know, conditions are different in your part of the world than they are on, in mine on certain bands at certain times. You know, we had a lot of fun, fun with that. And then after that, um, we tried a few more times, but we didn't succeed those times. That's right. Um, we failed a few times and, and we succeeded. We did quite well. We we, did, we succeeded twice, didn't we? Did yeah. It? Again, recently, I was on the 7100 in the car. I think I had the slide winder coil, a coil that you move, the, you know, you move, you move it up and down and it, it brings different parts of the coil in. And, and that was, again, once again, we had been talking on the Discord a little bit for a, a day or two ahead of that. And yeah. I, knew, I knew that I was going to be out doing a Parks on the Air at that point. So I let you know in a, in a private message. So you got your stuff set up in the car. You went, you went out to your hill and uh, I got my stuff set up and I went up to my Pota park, which, which is also on a hill. We were able to make a contact. It was a little bit rough copy for me. Yeah. Um, and I sent but, you an audio clip, didn't I? Did you see yeah, the you audio did. clip I sent you? And I was coming in stronger to you than you were to me, but we were able to make the contact. And again, it was fun because I, I did a POTA, that POTA activation. I made, I don't know, 70 or, or so contacts that day, but only one to England. And that was you. Yeah. And that's because we tried so hard, didn't we? Because yeah. what it was, I contacted you originally. I said, you know, I, you know, because we've been friends for a few years now. I said, um, I like, you know, I like how you're doing that HF uh, park, parks on the air. I just had, to, after seeing you operating, I had to try and contact you, you know, um, and see, you know, see if it was possible. And we tried quite a few times and failed and we did it with the hamstick and then we, uh, we did it, you know, recently. But the point, you know, the point of this video is if I can do it, anyone can. I mean, I don't know what power you were using. I was mobile, you know, on fairly small aerials, you know, nothing special. And on 50 watts, if I can do it anywhere, what power were you on? Quite a lot more, weren't you? No. Um, actually, when I was on um, oh. POTA, when I, when I run POTA, I always run 73 watts. <laughs> you know, 73, good luck uh, power. Um, I just have a, a, you know, a small battery, and, and that seems to, to work well with the radio. And then uh, in the shack, I just have 100 watts. So really not any different in the shack. When I, when I was POTA, my antenna was an NFED half wave. And I had it, uh, I had the far end up on a 30 foot tower. So that, that may have helped a little bit. Here in the shack, I just have a dipole out in the yard and that's only about 15 feet high. So I don't, I don't have anything elaborate here either. And, and to your point, Chris, if we can do it, anybody can. 
it just sometimes takes a little bit of planning and exactly and you know in some degree band conditions too you have to kind of factor that in but i was on the t- i don't i didn't just say to you um you know give me a call at random without mm-hmm. checking i would go on the band and i would hear a lot of america on and i would say i would and i'd check check the sfi and um that would be good. I'd be hearing lots of American stations. You know, I've not just contacted you. You know, I spoke to um, Chuck. Is it KK6 USY? Um, yeah, yeah. And that's a good and, contact. Yeah, yeah. Because he's quite over to the West, isn't he? Yeah, he's about 3,000 miles West of me. So if you were wow. able to contact wow. Chuck, then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're doing real well. And Steve, temporary offline, he heard me. Okay, I, yep, and I he's... just about got through to him. He'll kill me. I, don't, I forgot his call sign. Is it <laughs> W7HU? Something like that. Um, I think that's it, yeah. The guy, the guy with the, who had the jam in, the government jam in the 40-metre band. Yeah, and a lot of these were on 15 metres. You know, they're on bands that uh, have been quiet for quite a long time, you know, so it's quite exciting. That's a good point, too. Some of these higher bands are starting to open up a little bit. And Absolutely, some yeah. of those bands are good for these long distance contact because the noise floor is lower. But again, to your point, you know, even if you fail the first time, keep trying. Because yeah, uh, the, the reason we did it is because we failed so much. Right. If we never fail, we never tried. You know, just, just to, to relate another story, um, kind of similar, um, a friend of mine that um, I've been corresponding with him through YouTube for a while now, and he just put together an HF station. He's a, a general and he wanted to test it out. So just like you and I, Chris, you know, we, we talked through a text message and set up a time and we started off on 40 meters. He's in Kentucky, or I'm sorry, Tennessee, yeah. and I'm in Connecticut. So about a thousand, maybe, maybe 1200 miles. So we started off on 40. We thought that would be our best bet. It failed. I, I couldn't hear him. He couldn't hear me. So then we just kept trying and then uh, we found 20 meters worked and we've been able to contact each other a few times. I've been home over 10 years and I've, I've never noticed that I'm getting less and less interested. I'm not saying that for one minute, but you do slightly. And if you do, if you speak to America every day on HF, you know, after a, after a while, it, it wouldn't be as exciting. I mean, it stands to reason, doesn't it? But when you get involved with helping being an Elmer, helping someone else out, you know, they, they'll ring you up in the middle of the night and you go, oh, I'm flipping it, I don't want, but I'll do it because, you know, and you end up enjoying it and you realise you realize what what it was you used to, you know, what, why you got into it and yeah. what was the magic of radio. Yeah, and, and that's an excellent point because um, because I've been licensed since 1992 and I've been in and out of the hobby several times over the years. And I've even got somebody that kind of keeps my interest here locally you know, he's always coming up with ideas and things that he wants to try. And, and like you said, sometimes I'm, you know, busy or preoccupied with something else, but, but then once he starts telling me about this project he's working on, gets my interest again. Yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah. You know, let's try that and see if it works. And, and, and then, you know, I'm out there trying the same thing. And, and in fact, some of the motivation for some of my videos comes from him because he's been, you know, trying something and having success. So we're failing sometimes. And, yeah. uh, and I'm right there with him because, you know, because he's getting my interest and, and keeping me interested in it. So, so that's part of this too, trying to make a contact with you, you know, in the UK with fairly modest equipment, a hundred Watts and, you know, and a wire or a hamstick or something like that. And uh, we're able to do it. You know, we don't have to spend tons of money on amplifiers and, and towers yeah. and antennas to, to kind of make it work. We just have to be patient and enjoy the process exactly enjoy failing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because right. it leads it leads to success in the end if you know if you persevere so uh, by the way what i just wanted to say it wasn't just the um the hf contacts you know um i like pushing every type possible of communication on ham radio you know pushing it to its limits i was just gonna is it okay if i just share my screen with you i was oh, learning perfect. how to yeah, do go it right ahead yeah uh, I just had four videos. I won't play them, but four videos just to show what I'm doing here it might be interesting for people to see. I'm beta testing the uh, this mag loop. This is a, a 2E0 ERO mag loop antenna. He makes the capacitor, he makes the capacitor himself. 
you know he makes everything oh wow you know that coax is is it west flex it's really is high quality coax you know um yeah. so a lot of it's 3d printed and i'm beta testing this for him and testing it and this was this is a triple mag loop and this one that i'm testing is 80 meters to 20 meters that's the key thing i was i'm experimenting on 80 and 20 with this aerial this video was to show that I got a contact into Sweden from the UK on 80 meters. And you can clearly see, I tried to, I was on the radio here. I tried to show it in one continuous sweep, you know, going through my lounge, the coax, and then the radio, you know, one sweep, you could see it was uh, genuine. And then I'm at, you know, and I made a contact into Sweden or Excellent. Switzerland. Um, another one here was speaking to Australia, uh, no, this was, you saw this, didn't you? I, yeah. This is um, France. I'm in the UK and I managed to open repeaters in France, 300 miles away. And so that was a lot of fun. And that was, um, um, that was probably Tropo, right? If I remember right. Yes, that was, that was tropospheric ducting. Yes. Excellent. So I do a lot of that. When we get Tropo here, you know, it, we hear different countries, you know, on VHF and UHF. You know, if, if you get Tropo, you probably hear a state or another state the other side of it. You just hear different different American voices from different parts of America. Generally speaking, uh, yeah. Um, if I'm lucky, I could get Canada, but that hasn't happened. Using this mobile aerial, I, uh, I managed to get to Australia from the UK, and that's 12,000 miles away. That's wow, the furthest that's contact for me. That's great. Um, just, just on a, on, this was on 50 watts, you know, from the mobile, very modest little setup. And I always do a, a continuous sweep video from talking to someone to actually walking out, you know, in one sweep. So you can see it, you know, there's people, people think you're making it up. Another one, which I enjoy doing, this is the, uh, this is the New York, New York repeater, KQ2H in yes. the Catskill Mountains of New York. That's three and a half thousand miles away from me. On, this is an FM repeater on 10 meters. And I'm opening it from my car on 50 watts. So I like trying things that are a bit out the ordinary. It's not just me, Hayden, Amateur Radio DX. He's he's opened the, we were having a discussion in the Discord. He's open. He knew exactly what it was. He's done it from Australia. Well, I'll leave, definitely we'll have links to your channel in these videos in the description in case anybody wants to go through them. Yeah. You know, if you've got, if you know Ham, you've got a friend, you know, you do it's not about social media. Try and arrange a contact. You know, you will learn a lot. You will learn what yeah. bands work at what time of day. You know, if it's someone 50 miles away, 100 miles away, you, it might be very difficult to do it on HF. You know, you might be better off using 10 metres um, or even VHF or UHF. You know, keep going back and having a think about it. And this is actually a thing, isn't it? It's called making a sked. Arranging yeah. a sked yeah. with another operator. So yeah. either by a phone call or an email or Facebook Messenger is great because there's groups full of hams who want to do this, you know, try and arrange a contact and arrange one that's difficult because you'll crack it in the end. It's a great positive message. And, you know, keep keep trying. If you don't succeed the first time, keep at it. Make some changes see what works, see what doesn't, and, uh, you know, enjoy the process and learn from it. Yeah, and a few tips. What I did, uh, Rob, you know, for your mm -hmm. viewers, if I go to QRZ, I just go to QRZ.com, this section with, you know, with the um, all the numbers and figures on that not many people understand. Yeah. And the top <laughs> left, the top left, it says SFI, solar, is it the solar flux index, Rob? Yeah, that's what I know yeah. it as. I mean, some days I look at this and it's 70, you know, it's low. I think when the, when I hit the New York repeater, for example, on 10 meters, I think this was about 120. And you can see if the, you can see if the bands are dead, can't you as well? So that's quite handy. And take, take today, for example, look, 17 and 15 meters are fair. Now, this is the bit I find misleading because I was on 15 minute, meters today and I could hear loads of America. It doesn't always tie in all this information. It's a good guideline, and I, I know yes, a lot it's of a good guideline. But don't cancel your journey based on these colors. You know, just because they're red, don't don't stay at home. You know, give it a go. Yeah, I, the way I look at it is, I, I kind of look at that. 
to kind of get an idea and try it anyway. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, maybe it's because those numbers were low. Sorry, on that day, I, I uh, contacted you. Do you remember? It was going gray line. It was going dark. Uh, you know, like I said, in 20 minutes, it's going dark. Mm-hmm. And my leisure battery, I use a leisure battery in the back of my car. And um, it had gone flat. And I, and I raced, uh, you know, I went raced home. <laughs> I got because I got two leisure batteries. That's seventy amp hours, and another one that's one hundred and ten. I got the big one out, oh, yeah, okay. and um, I raced back up to the hilltop, and it was just going dark. And that's when we cracked it, wasn't it? Because it was grey line. Yeah, grey line is an interesting. Uh, that's an interesting time of day. I've had some good success with that even recently. Um, I put up my new station antenna here. And uh, I, I was done with work for the day. I ran outside because I wanted to tune um, one of the legs. It was a little long. And uh, I came back in and it was gray line here. And I turned on the radio. And the first thing I heard was a station from Japan calling CQ. And luckily, I got him on the first CQ. So I was able That's to right. contact I, him. I saw your video. I saw yeah. the video. It was the first time you've ever worked Japan and you'd only just put the aerial up. But yeah, I heard him as if he was next door. It was great. And then right after I contacted him, the pileup started. But I listened for a while and, you know, maybe about 45 minutes or so as the, the sun set, he faded out. I told my neighbor down the road, who's also a ham about it, and he tried for the next few days. And he heard him a couple more times. He was getting on, the, the guy from Japan. Brilliant. But he couldn't bust the pile up. But it was the same thing every day, right around sunset. He was in there strong. And then as the, the sun set, he faded out. So that's a that's another good point, uh, Chris. If you're going to set up a sked, you know, you may want to think about gray line if, if that kind of lines yeah. up with where you are and the station you're trying to contact. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to just explain what that is for, for the view? I mean, I've got a basic, I mean, I'll say, I mean, I'm, I've just learned what it is. I think I know what it is. When I were Australia, for example, I noticed that it was every day at 9.30 in the morning I could start here in Australia. And mm-hmm. it tied in with the SFI being high, you know, about half nine in the morning. And I looked it up on, I just did a search for a grey line map, you know, and you can see what parts are dark or light in the world. The place I kept hearing was dark. And I looked it up on the internet. When it's going dark there and it becomes gray line follows the curve doesn't it on yes. the uh, on yeah. the gray line it follows that that gray line or, or transition between day day and night kind of around the globe is that is that what we call long path no i th- i think well it, it could po- potentially be long path well say you and i and if we work the shortest path between us over the atlantic ocean that's short path But there are times when either it could be either gray line or some other mode of propagation where we'd go the other way. That I think would be long path. Just because we've been doing this test, I've learned about the long path, you know, gray line. It's made me look at it. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, there's. I didn't really understand it before. I don't know if I fully understand it yet, but that's the point: is to just experiment (laughs) with it, try and and learn, and see what works and see what doesn't. You've got to use what tools you've got, haven't you? And that's 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 another one. So shall we shall we arrange another contact then? You know, while we're talking about it. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, we should. uh, We should try again here. Do it the different different way around. Next time you hear England, you know, the UK coming in and you know what time i finish work roughly and i'm out and about yep um next time you hear the uk coming in give me a shout and we'll i'll scramble up that hilltop again (laughs) (laughs) that sounds good thanks for uh you know joining in chris i really appreciate yeah uh, having this session with you and and i hope the viewers do too Uh, and, and again our point here was to just kind of share our experience our enthusiasm and kind of encourage you guys uh, you know, to try the same thing and, and don't get discouraged if, if you are trying something like this and it fails, just keep at it and, uh, and you'll get there. And, and when you do have success, it'll be that much more enjoyable. I couldn't have said it better. You know, we've, it, it's never been easier, really, is it? You know, we, we've got contact with, you know, Facebook and Messenger and phone calls. You know, you can contact someone on the other side of the world that you know or the other side of your town or whatever. But OK, Chris, uh, thanks again. And, and like I said, okay, anybody awesome. out there that's watching. If you haven't uh, seen Chris's channel, make sure you check it out. There'll be some links down below. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for having me, Rob. Cheers. 7-3.